Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our session on Great Grains, which is a panel discussion about reviving heritage grains from around the world. My name is Sinead Fortune, and I am the program manager for the Seed Sovereignty Program, which is run by the Gaia Foundation. We work with growers, seed suppliers, and community groups across the UK and Ireland to encourage seed sovereignty, rebuild knowledge around open pollinated seed production, and increase demand and supply for locally produced open pollinated seed. For over 35 years, the Gaia Foundation has worked with indigenous communities from around the world on seed sovereignty, earth jurisprudence, and the protection of sacred natural sites. On the recognition, protection, and spreading of indigenous wisdom and practices. And since 2017, we've been carrying out the same work here in the UK and Ireland drawing on wisdom that is still there, although so much scarcer than it once was. Wisdom about the land we are part of, the food we grow, and the seeds on which we depend. Simply put, we wouldn't be here without grains. The relationship between grains and the advancement of the human population throughout our history is clear. For its nutrition, its storability, its protein content and caloric value, grains are essential to our survival. There is no record of a civilization that has not had grains at its center, but not all grains are created equal. Industrial production of grains makes great demands on our ecosystems, our growers, and indeed our bodies. Comparatively, traditional grains such as heritage oats, rice, and millet provide sustainable solutions for regenerating ecosystems, food sovereignty, and the cultures that we enjoy the world over. It is my honor to introduce our panelists for this great grain session. They come from all over the world, from Wales, Zimbabwe, and from the Gizu province of China. They have never met in person and perhaps never will, but they share a great bond and a great wisdom that they are all putting into practice. First off, we'll hear from Method Gundiza, who is an Earth Stewards Prudence practitioner from Zimbabwe and the director of the Earth Lore Foundation, based in Johannesburg, South Africa. After many years as an accountant, he discovered a deep passion for working with rural farming communities, and now de dedicates his life to reviving traditional farming practices and indigenous seeds. Next, we will hopefully hear from Gerald Miles. We're having a little bit of uh, technical issues at the moment, but if he can join us, uh, Gerald is an organic farmer and co-founder of Agri-Activism as well as a resilient campaigner for food sovereignty. In 2003, he drove his tractor all the way from West, West Wales to Downing Street to protest about GM crops and to raise support from fellow farmers. In 2010, Gerald launched Wales's first community-supported agriculture scheme. Gerald is very active in Chlaverny, our Welsh oat growing network. And finally, we'll hear from Zheng Zi Yang, known as Ox Brother, who is an ethnic Dong rice farmer, seed guardian, and founder of the Gizu Oxen Cultivation Tribe and the Gizu Heritage Agricultural Cooperative in China. Using traditional agricultural methods of oxen, the cooperative is recovering local rice species that have been adapted to the regional climate for, for centuries of seed cultivation. The cooperative involves the wider community through participatory seed saving projects and ecotourism. <clears throat> These all help to finance seed conservation while protecting the core aim of retaining traditional husbandry of the land and the integrity of rural communities. Mr. Yang is joined by Lin Chen, who is very kindly interpreting for us and is a great supporter of his work uh, and is also living proof of the engagement Mr. Yang's work is having far and wide in China across generations and demographics. Lin is working with the oxen-led cultivation tribe Mr. Yang founded. And she will also be adding her, her own thoughts from her own perspective. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to pass it on to Method. Um, Method, please join us. Thank you, Schneider. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. It depends which part of the world you are at the moment. My name is Method Gundiza, as I've been introduced, working with Ethlo Foundation based in Johannesburg, South Africa. As Ethlo, we work with um, basically 
two communities, one in Elukwatin, Mpumalanga province of South Africa, and um, in Bikita, Mashingo province, southeast of Zimbabwe. I will speak to you about my journey with my own community where I come from, Bikita uh, district, southeast of Zimbabwe. I have been on a journey with my community since uh, 2015, and this is a journey to revive Millet, as um, Schneider has uh, already indicated. So I will tell you my story today. I came to South Africa in July 20, 2007, and then joined this organization, Ethel Foundation, in May 2013. It was at that point that I actually spoke to myself, having worked in this organization and seeing the work that the organization was doing around reviving traditional seeds, reviving uh, rituals, reviving um, traditional foods and uh, ways of lives. And this spoke to me personally, and I went back to my own roots to engage in dialogues with my own elders. So back then in 2015, I went back and I spoke to elders, men and women, on a one-to-one -one basis initially, and then growing into much bigger discussions, which brought together the whole community. Elderly men and women, young men and young women, and children too. And we went into a dialogue about our vulnerability as a community, looking at our food situation, looking at our harvest situation. And this led to the dialogues, which ended up with talking about millet. And this is the story I'm telling, I'm telling you about. When I'm talking about millet, I'm talking about two types in particular, which are grown in my area. The one is finger millet, which has basically two varieties, white, white grain, and brown grain. Then I'm also referring to pearl millet, which has got many varieties. You talk about the short, short plant, short season, you talk about the long plant, long season. You talk about the long uh, head of uh, the long millet head, short millet head. You talk about plain millet head. You talk about hairy millet head. All these are different varieties of millet that in my journey with the communities have actually, uh, we have spoken about and we have been on a journey to revive. So as I said in 2015, we started talking with the communities about our vulnerabilities, as I've said. And when we look back, as way back as the late 80s, early 90s, the staple in Bikita was either brown sadza or gray sadza. Sadza is the local name for our staple of food, pap. Gray is to pearl millet, where brown is to finger millet. Now, looking at our food situation as we spoke, we saw that many families in the area now couldn't have enough food to eat throughout the season throughout the year until the next farming season. And the elders spoke about a local name called Masunda Chandu, which means harvesting just enough food to carry us through winter, which is from about April to around about end of July, early August. This tells you about how short the harvest was 
because it could only last those months of the year. We explored and discussed why was this the case? And we also that at the turn of the 80s into the early 90s, our food had changed from either brown, gray, into white pap, white sadza. By this I mean we now ate more of maize than millet, which wasn't the case before. As we explored further, we saw that at the time then in 2015, we had lost the major infrastructures that were supporting or were supported by millet. By this I mean sapi. This is the temporary storage of millet head when it is harvested and it is stored there before it is threshed to extract the grain for consumption. We also saw matura or lura in singular. This is the storage which is closer home, actually on the homestead, where the final millet grain is stored. A very well-engineered structure which ensured that the, gra the grain is in maximum condition for years and years. Now, as we explored further, we started to see why had we lost millet? And the elder said, this is men and women. Millet is labor intensive. From the day you plant it to the day you have it as food in front of you, of you at the table, you go to work. And because maize is simpler, we all shifted from millet to maize. Here is the catch. Maize, however, is a difficult plant for our region, which is dry, hot, with uh, sandy, uh, well-drained soils, soils that have been used over generations and generations, fertilizer supplied, and um, they are now very, very poor. Meaning, even though we have adopted maize, we still do not harvest enough from it. These are all discussions with the elders, with the communities. We also explore um, so, uh, what is good about millet? Millet is like grass. Indeed, it is grass. It's drought resilient. In the, in the most of drought conditions, it still survives. And even if it dries up, when it receives drops of rain, it will re-emerge. Millet is not a heavy feeder like maize. Even in our soils that are now very poor, we can still get something out of it. We talk about all this goodness. Millet is nutritious. Finger millet porridge is what is fed to our children. Pearl millet is the daily staple, nutritious, highly nutritious, high in fiber, recommended for diabetic people, uh, those with high blood pressure. But even then, millet is the grain that brews the beer that's prepared for all the ceremonies, for all the rituals, and for all social events in the village. We talk about all these good things and we say, so what? What do we do? So in early 2015, we started a journey to revive millet. We connected um, with those few farmers in the village that had kept on growing millet. There were very few and they complained that now 
because we are very few, we are also living the growing of millet because the birds come and eat everything for us. And we went to them. We got a bit of uh, seed from them. We also went to uh, partner organizations, some that had journeyed and revived millet. I'm talking here about Zimso, for example, Matebeleland, North, uh, Western Zimbabwe, dry areas like ours as well. And we gathered seed and shared with the farmers. In that season, fewer farmers took it, increased hectare. In 2016, it was even better. I remember my own mother saying to me, you know, we talk about these things in the community meetings, but even here in our own home, before your father died, we used to have tzapu, we used to have the granary. We don't have those things. And we buy food in perpetuity. For me, as your mother, I will start this journey together with you. This was her story. So we journeyed in 2016, and uh, farmers started increasing hectare. Uh, those who had been skeptic started to embrace it also and grow it. And in 2017, in August, we started our uh, district seed and food fair, a platform where farmers come together to display their seeds, uh, so as to share knowledge, so as to exchange with other farmers, uh, seeds that were on display. And we started to see that farmers were embracing more of the seed as we gathered each time, the food started to change from white to brown to gray. And now, every time we gather, we see, we see and eat brown and gray sadza. This is where we are. In August 2019, we had the greatest opportunity of witnessing a threshing and winnowing ceremony. This is such a beautiful ceremony in our village where men and women, old and young, gather at a farmer's homestead to thresh millet, to winnow, to share beer, to share labor, to share happiness. And we had this great opportunity to attend one of those events in a community called Chirorwe in Bikita. As we journeyed, we started to notice that if we have to grow millet, we will thresh it. When we thresh millet, we need specific threshing sticks, which come from specific trees. Where are those trees? We start to look for them. We start to work to protect those trees and to multiply them. To winnow, we need certain materials from certain trees, from certain reeds. Where are they? We start to look for them. Do we? Let's protect this. Let's multiply this. As we do that, we see that millet begins to reweave the community back to each other. As we gather in a winnowing ceremony, we begin to see that we come together again as a community to work together, to share joy, to share happiness. As we multiply food and have food, and beginning to see structures of tapi and uras coming up, we begin to see the community coming together again, belonging to each other, working together, supporting each other. This is very important. Millet is precious to us. It's bringing us together.
is bringing back the rich force. Chief of Mamute said, back then in 2015, when we were talking about the rituals, he said, how can I do, how can I perform the rituals to ask for rain? Where is the finger minute? Now we have gone back to him and said, here is the finger minute. Those rituals are back. The celebrations are back. The ceremonies are there. We start to see the birds enjoying. As we understand, we do not grow food for just ourselves. We grow for the wider community of birds and other animals that we share the space with. This is my story of millet in Bikita. Thank you. Thank you so much, Method. That was a wonderful story, beautifully told. Um, so now from Zimbabwe, we're going to jump to Wales and we have Gerald Miles with us through the, the power of Vince and uh, a bit of good luck. We have him back. Uh, so Gerald, welcome. And uh, please do tell us about your story. Can you hear me? Yes, Gerald, we can hear you and we have your presentation up. So just uh, feel free to just let me know when you want to move to the next slide and I'll move through the presentation. But you feel right. free to go okay. ahead. Thank you. Um, mine, I'm really for Dach, he had it. I cry so he did in Neo Gumri. I said it's a pleasure to be with you today from Wales. Um, it's great to have your company. Um, the first slide, as you see, we, our farm, Kyrie's farm, it's a family farm. I farmed it all my life and now my son is farming it. It's an organic farm, 120 acres on the coast of Pembrokeshire. Uh, next slide. Um, Kyrie's farm, it's um, a mixed farm. Uh, we are family, Anne and myself have got four sons, and my youngest son, Carwin, is the farmer now. I came home to farm when I was 16, and we keep suckler cattle, grow grain crops, we have some pigs. Next slide. And as well, we have a CSA on the farm. As you see there, we run right down to the water's edge, to the sea. We're very lucky to be here, especially we appreciate it more and more every day in this lockdown, in the situation we are. Next slide. We formed the first CSA, Community Supported Agriculture on the farm back in 2010. It's one of the best things we've ever done. And now we supply uh, organic vegetables to over 55 families weekly. Next slide. One of the varieties we grow is Black Supreme. Black Supreme I, it took me over 20 years to find it. Black Supreme used to be a variety that was grown commonly around in this area in Wales. My grandfather used to grow it, my father used to grow it. But then modern varieties and it took over. I searched every way to find this variety to try and grow it again. When I was, during my farming life, I used to coach rugby uh, in the local rugby club. And I organize a rugby trip to Ireland every year. I've done it for 25 years. While I was over in Ireland on a rugby trip, I met a farmer in the rugby club in Nace in Ireland. And we started talking about corn. And I said about Black Supreme, and he said, well, I've got some. 
So the link was made. And the following year, I was sent 50 kilos in a bag in the back of a bus on a rugby trip to uh, St. David's. And that's how I started getting the Black Supreme back, the Holy Grail of Oats. Next slide. As well, I grow Emma wheat. Emma wheat is an ancient variety that dates back to the Egyptians. I was able, I was fortunate enough to have a sample of this grain while I was on a demonstration in Brussels outside the European Parliament when Monsanto was trying to change legislation to prevent farmers keeping their own seed and sharing their own seed. And I was given 10 kilos of it and I brought it back with me on Eurostar and I sowed it by hand in one of the fields. And now I've got a, a few ton of it and it's a wonderful grain, but it needs detailing. And that's the, the task we're up against at the moment is trying to find the detailer. Next slide. As you see from this photo, we've got two, we've got Emma Wheat and we've got Chypris. Chypris is a Welsh word for mixed mixed of grains and this is what our grandfathers used to grow and this is what they used to feed the cattle uh, on the farm when before soya was even even heard of chypris is a mixture of black oats and barley black oats is ideal for uh, being as a mixed crop in growing because it's black it ripens and is ready to harvest the same time as barley and we used to my father used to feed sheaves of shipris to cattle and cows out in october before they came in it conditioned them before coming in next slide This, I got involved with uh, Katie Hastings from um, the Gaia Food Sovereignty, uh, Seed Sovereignty Project, because, and one of the things it matched was our passion to preserve seeds. I'm passionate about uh, having these, finding these ancient varieties because I, I believe that they are the seeds of the future. With climate change as we are enduring now on this pandemic, it's these seeds we will need for farmers in the future. And what we're trying to do is grow these seeds so we can share it and it's available to farmers. Next slide. Being part of the Gaia uh, Seed Sovereignty, we formed ourselves a group called Chaverni. Chaverni means our, our cereals, our grain. And fortunately, we were able to um, get uh, seeds from gene banks from IBA in Aberystwyth. We had 14 varieties in all, ancient varieties, that were grown back in the 1900s. And as well, we had some from a uh, germ plant in Norwich. And this photo is in 2019, uh, some of the uh, growers and small farmers that are part of the group of Chaverni, we sowed them by hand in a plot in our field to boost, to boost the grain 
to gain more seeds that we can share. Next slide. In the following year then, uh, two of us, we shared the seed and we sold them by hand. We had uh, 14 different plots and one of them I've got beside me. It's uh, called, it's an old uh, oat variety. Um, it's called Xavier Floyd. Uh, next slide. I, that's a video, I don't know whether you can play that or not, but it, it is just showing us that we planted them by hand. Our next slide. And this is the, uh, some of the oats as it is growing and maturing. Next slide. These are the plots, we marked each plot and we've harvested them by hand and bagged them. And once this lockdown is over, we're going to thrash, thrash these um, um, varieties separately. And by thrashing, you take the seeds off the actual stalk, the straw. And then hopefully we'll have five times, if not more, quantity of the seed to carry on for next year. Gradually, we'll, uh, we'll build it up to, well, definitely a few kilos and definitely in the end to a, a, a ton. So this is the, the uh, process we're doing to keep these rare seeds and to really multiply them and so that they're available for other farmers. Next slide. Back in October, we uh, had a um, thrashing day. This is us collecting some wheat to take up to uh, thrash. And um, this was with the help of my uh, volunteers that were staying on the farm because we have volunteers every year. Marta and Maria, who are we're loading it into a trailer to take up to Ewan's farm, Ewan Evans's farm. Next slide. This is he had a old thrusher there. He's got a lot of old implements on his farm. Uh, on Coy de Vadre farm uh, above Aberystwyth. And this machine was built in the 1950s. It's a Swedish machine. And you feed the sheaf into the top of the machine. And then it, it is a drum there. It takes off the seeds. And you have the seeds coming down to a chamber in the bottom. Next slide. These machines are very rare. As you see, there's a photo there of Katie and myself. And there we are busy with this machine, driven by belt by a tractor. This was before electricity, before PTO driven implements. But this is how we used to, as a community, you used to help each other and thrash together. Next slide. Before combine harvesters came, they used reaper binders. And binders, this machine used to use to drive it into the field. It used to cut the corn and it used to cut and be on an elevator going through to a, a string. They were tied by string in the end and turned into a sheaf. And the sheaf used to be dropped on the field and your job was to collect them and put them in bunches of fours. And then in two weeks, put them in a small rick of 16. Next slide, last slide, I think. This is a photo of us harvesting 
Oates uh, uh, in 1958 and used to stack them in the yard. This is how you used to store your corn. I was very young then, I was about 10. But that's the last time we ever did this. After that, it was a combine harvester. But this led to combine harvesters coming in, modern varieties being bred, and we lost our ancient varieties. It's so important to keep these old varieties so that they're accessible for farmers to grow and really to try and get farmers back to feeding their own corn on their own farm. Instead, we have gone dependent nowadays on soya from abroad, from Argentina, Brazil, because it's the cheapest protein, but the consequences of it, we're destroying forests and destroying the environment. When we used to in that, I know perhaps it's being nostalgic, when we used to grow our own crops, but it was, it worked and it could still work today. But these varieties, we need to try and find more of these ancient varieties and have them accessible to all. At that time, we were working as a community. Farmers would help each other. On that day, on that harvesting, there was about 20 farmers working together. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you, you have it's put in your mind about ancient grains. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gerald. And I'm, I'm really delighted that you were able to join us in the end. Um, so everyone buckle up from Wales. We're jettisoning over to the Gizu province of China. And we have with us uh, Zhengzi Yang and, uh, uh, and Lin, who's going to be interpreting for us. Very warm welcome to you. And thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Hello, I'm from the United States of the United States, Yang Zhengxi. Hello, uh, my name is Yang Zhengxi. They call me the Ox Brother. Um, I'm from Guizhou Province, China. I'm Dongzhu. Um, so I am uh, of the Dong eth ethnicity. Um, we have the Dong Chorus. It's one of the um, and um, intangible, in, intangible cultural heritage. Um, I would like to sing a little bit for you. Um, this is an episode of um, a Dome Chorus song, and it's uh, supposed to imitate the sound of nature, um, like the sound of cicada. Um, yeah, so it's, does it sound like uh, the sound of cicada? Um, so I'm Yohai de Sensan Huangsi, Nong Yawa, Chu Tao Jia, 
，就慢慢的侵犯了我们这块土地。Um, so I was the first college graduate from the Yangtung village and in the area.、Um, and I found in the past few decades,、um, the heritage seeds are disappearing, and so is the traditional farming style. So the new agriculture way, which involves a lot of、uh, industrialization, it did not bring economic growth for the region. Instead, it has brought pesticides and has damaged our land. I decided to go back to my hometown. 把这些珍稀的老品种保存下来，把这些品种里面会有一些珍贵的品种，它会有一些好的市场价值，让我们老百姓种起来，然后带着他们脱贫征收，让家里面的小孩子们都能和父母在一起，父母不用去打工了，然后人们在这里都能够吃上小时候吃的健康的我们的食物。So in 2014, I decided to quit my job in the government and return to my hometown, the Yangdong village, to preserve seeds,、um, and I also discover discover market value for those、um, rare seeds、uh, and help with economic growth in the area. So this would、uh, do two things. First, it would help keep family together in the village instead of parents work away in cities and leave children behind at home with their grandparents. And also,、um, I hope to provide healthy and sustainable food locally and nationally. We collected these old plants and formed a company called Yangtong Village Farmers Cooperative, a successful way of growing plants. So then,、uh, I started collecting and conserving local heritage seeds. Um, establish the Guizhou Oxen Heritage Agricultural Co-op,、um, and we invented the witness、uh, model, which involves、um, having people come in here and stay in the cow shed in,、um, like bread breakfast. We are in the forest to build a cow farm, to establish the long grain production. The first step is to establish the Chinese Chinese Heritage Farming Cooperative in the Yangtze Valley. Um, so after we build this、uh, cow shed in,、um, we start、um, the the model of how preserving the seeds in the people who are, are farming,、um, and establish the demonstration area for the revival of Chinese agriculture. We are located in the Yangtze Valley, located in the southern part of Guizhou Province. This area is located in the Yangtze Valley, located in the southern part of Guizhou Province. 至今保存了很多丰富的传统的老品种。Um, we're located um in a remote um area, mountainous area of、uh, Guizhou Province in China. Um, as the mountains are um not easily accessible and actually helps retain a rich and varied uh agricultural tradition. 这是我们。贵州牛根部落在中国的算是也算东南部了，靠近广西桂林和贵阳。Um, so here on the map you can see where the star is, where we're located, and it's near the city of、uh, Guilin and Guiyang in the southern part. 怎么才能够保护像我们中国农业物种？就是把这最后的栖息地保护下来，是我们所要做的工作。Um, so then we start thinking, how can we protect、uh, China's last habitat of heritage species? 我们在这里收集了很多的老品种，有水稻、豆子、红薯，还有瓜呀、苞谷呀这些东西。嗯、um, ，so from 2012, and we started、um, the seeds conservation、uh, hub, and it has、uh, grains, beans, herbs, sweet potatoes, and of course,、um, 62 different kinds of rice seeds. In 2014, we collected all these seeds from the farm of a few plants to give to the farmers to harvest. Then the corn was harvested. 送去检验的结果质量是非常好的。Um, so in 2014, um, uh, we started testing on six kinds of rice seeds. We gave it to the farmers, 
um, who cultivate with oxen to grow in a sample area and the lab results of the sample was very good. 2015年的時候我們就成立了貴州有牛復古農業合作社,有三個層都加入進來。Um so next year in 2015, um the uh, Heritage Agriculture Co-op was established. 總面積呢有2500公頃,1300多人,5300多人呢。Um and so the there are three sub villages of the Yangdong area covering a total area of 2500 um, hectares with uh, 1,397 households and over 5,000 people all joined the co-op. We also established the Dong Treaty uh, on production rules. Um, so the tribe members, they must uh, raise uh, oxen or cattle. And then they need to um, protect the land from pollutants and not use pesticides or um, other chemicals. Mm-hmm. They need to plant uh, the traditional seeds we collected. Uh, also plow and harrow with uh, the cattle. And fertilization is uh, the cattle manure or green manure only. Uh, we do weeding and pest control with uh, the combination of uh, raising fish and duck in the rice paddock. So the fish and duck method also uh, prevent um, the rice from getting diseased. So the members, uh, they need to guarantee by household oxen and family honor. Um, the violators of the rules above, they will get penalty. And the penalty includes uh, 150 kilograms of rice, and 150 kilograms of rice wine, 150 kilograms of meat. Uh, and you also might be expelled from the alliance uh, with no future benefits. This is our tea,我们三个村的所有换回里面的土地跟牛牛棚人都作为合作社的资源来入股,然后按照贡献的积分来分红。um, so you can see that uh, on the, the photo above, it's our uh, rice terraces. So the land, oxen, um, cattle sheds, and manpower of the three villages, they're all counted as shares um, for shareholders. And yeah, so the uh, bonus points are earned by members based on uh, the number of um, ox, field area, and also the agricultural products they uh, contributed this year. And we grow rice in an ecological way with um, the combination of cattle, fish, duck, and paddy. So the fish and ducks they need to live in clean water source. Um they eat pests and weeds um in the rice paddy, and the duck stirs up the water by chasing the fish, so then the water will not be stagnant, it will start moving, and that prevents rice plant from diseases. Um, and then we uh, start the awareness uh, models. So we invite people from um, the cities to come here um, and visit uh, and witness our, the, our way of agriculture. Um, so we 
建设牛棚的地方，现在建成改建成小木屋，经营牛棚客栈，让城市里面的人来住到牛棚里面。And we build these cow shed in to accommodate visitors, and、so、they can come and spend holidays. Um, and with um, when is different season of the agriculture? This is just our small house, is built, everyone lives on top. Below is the cow shed. So here you can see a photo、uh, of a cow shed in.、Um, it's on the top of the mountains above、uh, the rice terraces. We have. 开始做这个迁种计划，就是在本地的农业物种通过数字化的保育，然后乡亲们参加。我们发起人是 a b o v Farm 的秦晨，还有我们一起。我们共同的梦想是寻找和保育中国贵州一千多个本地的农业品种。So last year,、uh, the founder of Above Farm, Ada Tin, and myself, we founded a new project in Guizhou.、Uh, the mission is to find and conserve a thousand local Guizhou varieties of heritage seed. 迁种计划是选择一千户农户来种植，就是一千户农民至少种植一个品种，然后收集一千个本地老品种。Um, so the 1,000 seed plan has、uh, three parts. The first one is to have、um, recruit 1,000 agricultural households to cultivate heritage crops. We are looking for 1,000 volunteers in the city to help the farmers, and to help the farmers. Each one is selected to plant one seed, and then we will be able to participate in our seed protection. The second part is to find 1,000 sponsors to adopt those seeds. Um, usually, they are from the cities. Build a thousand more seed plants, is that each variety is selected to our community. Um, and then to build、uh, a thousand more, which equals to about 165 acres of nursery. We are currently facing the biggest challenge of recruiting local seed producers to adopt the seed. Um, we ha- we're facing two biggest challenges. The first one is、uh, we're seeing drop the enthusiasm、uh, of farmers to cultivate heritage seeds. Ah,、uh, because 老品种的产量低，然后老百姓乡亲们想要产量高，然后呃，因为产量当然产量高也不一定能够带来高收益。我们只是想希望在市场把市场开拓的更好，就让乡亲们能够实在的得到。比较好的经济收益，继续愿意支持我们和我们一起种植老品种。嗯、mm-hmm. ，the um so the issue is that heritage seeds uh will lower uh rice production about better quality of rice, um and but the farmers here they want to see high production, um so we need to expand our markets um so that um、uh, when we sell our rice better for、uh, market price and then the farmers will start seeing clear benefits for their、um, households. 我们现在还有就是乡村的人才啦，也就很缺少人才，缺乏有能力的，有经过高等教育这样的年轻人回到乡村里面来工作啊，创业。Uh, yeah, and the second challenge is the lack of、uh, talent,、uh, which is the most important.、Uh, we we、uh, we don't have enough talents of、um, educated young people and specialized young people、um, that would come back to the village,、um, work here, or、uh, start their business here. 整个中国吧，现在都是趋势在城镇化，很多青年的大学生们呢、啊，都愿意都愿意到城市里面去工作。为了更好的，呃，自己的前景吧，实际就背井离乡了。嗯、um, ，so the urbanization is actually the、uh, trend in China right now. Um, and a lot of young college graduates, they want to work and stay in the cities. Um, for better education or medical resources. Um, and as a result,、uh, they、uh, sort of abandoned、uh, the culture that they used to have. 好、oh, ，谢谢，欢迎大家来到中国贵州来我们牛根部落做客，谢谢。嗯、uh, ，Thanks everyone. I want to invite you all to uh visit our tribe. Uh, and this is 
by uh, WeChat, which is the QR code uh, you could add if you use the software. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Ox Brother, for sharing your Dung Chorus as well. That was really, really beautiful. Um, just very quickly, um, as you can see, this was quite a full session. So we do have a Zoom link, uh, thanks to Siobhan and the Oxford Real Farming Conference volunteers for setting that up. Um, so if you have questions, please do uh, go over to that and join us. Um, we'll be uh, heading over shortly to have a, a debrief and a chat. So get a cup of tea and join us over there. Um, just very quickly, thank you so much to all the panelists for sharing your stories um, and your culture with us. It was very, very, it was fascinating um, and really enjoyable. Thank you to the Oxford Real Farming Conference team and to Fran. Thank you to Emma Murray Liu, who uh, did some translating or did a lot of translating for us uh, via emails to speak to Mr. Yang. Thank you to Lynn uh, for her fantastic interpreter skills. Uh, thank you to Katie. Uh, Katie Hastings is our Wales coordinator for all of her organization and to Vince for his magic behind the scenes, making sure that you could all see and hear us. Uh, so please do join us on the Zoom and we'll chat more then. Thank you very much. <laughs>